Today, I'm gonna test two easy hacks for laser engraving on wood, and then tell you which one I like to use most of the time. We'll go from this to something like that by the end of the video. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. In laser engraving, we're always looking for ways to make our burns look better. And there are several ways to do that. For wood, I see a ton of people in the forums and the communities using baking soda. I also see a ton of people using borax, or borax, I think it's borax. Borax, borax. So today, I'm gonna take the baking soda and the borax and put them head to head and see which one comes out better in our test burns. Each one of these has been mixed with the same ratio of 10 tablespoons hot water to one tablespoon of the powder. Then I'll stir it real good until it's really dissolved in there. So that's a 10 to one ratio if you're keeping track at home. Now that the solutions are ready, I'm gonna take this Baltic birch plywood and divide it up into three different sections. It is 18 inches long, so I'll measure and divide up six inch sections and draw dividers with that Sharpie. Uh, well, at least the best I can, I draw like a two-year-old. So the left side will be the borax, the middle one will be the control with no powder or solution wiped on it, and the right side will be our baking soda solution. I'm gonna start by applying the baking soda to the right side of the wood. Now I'm gonna be using a foam brush on both of these to make sure I can apply this as even as possible, and I'm just gonna be dipping it in and swiping it out from the center and making sure it's all covered. Once the baking soda side is done, I'm gonna be doing the borax side the same exact way. Now that they're both applied, I'm actually gonna take the boxes from both and set them in the center where the control is to help keep that wood weighed down. You wanna be very careful because if you apply any sort of liquid or water to thin wood, it will actually bow the material. Unless you do it on both sides, I've heard that helps but I always like to keep it weighed down and flat, and then I'm gonna let the wood completely dry overnight. While the wood's drying right here behind me, it's a great time to talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay. Is your dad working on a project that needs a custom PCB? Maybe something CNC'd or 3D printed in metal to give it that awesome look that he's looking for? Look no further than PCBWay.com. With cutting edge 3D printing, CNC, and PCB services, they have everything you need to help your dad finish that project. They have super fast shipping and a very user-friendly website, so check them out today at PCBWay.com. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, and thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now back to it. All right, the wood is done drying and it's ready to go. I pulled off the boxes that were weighing it down, and actually, it stayed pretty dang flat which is very important because anytime you spray wood, especially thin wood with water, it warps. So now what we need to do is walk this over and put it on the laser right over here. We're gonna get the file ready and get this thing burning. So I created a file in Lightburn that will use a logo and some text and burn that three times in each section. The difference between each of those three times is that it'll be different power. So it'll keep the same 400 speed, but the top will be 35 power and then 25 power and then 20 power at the bottom. It will burn that across all three at the same time of each section and we'll check it out and see how it looks. Now that the laser file is done here, all we have to do is shoot it over to the laser over there. Let's do it. And bam, just like that, it's done and it's time to check out the results. But first, if you're getting value from today's video, please smash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos about 3D printing, lasers, and CNC, please consider hitting that subscribe button now. Now let's check out those results. So if we take a look at this, you can see that the borax and the baking soda really did make a difference as far as how dark the burns were compared to the center where we don't have anything. It's kinda cool. So I think this shows that both hacks will actually work but which one is the best? So let's start with the borax. It actually came out very good and very dark in this test. I think it looks the best at 20% power, 400 speed. And to be honest, I would probably dial my settings in around there and not go too much higher because we can see that the 25 and the 35 actually were worse burns in this case. The bad thing about the borax is it's actually a carcinogen. That means it's really not great for you to be breathing. So you wanna make sure you have very good ventilation. Anytime you have a laser running, you want great ventilation, but especially when you're running something like borax 
on your laser. Make sure that's ventilating outside or you're doing it in a wide open space that has great ventilation. You should not use this on anything that is food safe as well, unless you're gonna seal it in. So don't do your cutting boards with borax and then just throw some mineral oil on it. You wanna make sure you seal that in because it is a carcinogen and you don't want that on your food safe stuff. As far as the baking soda goes over here, it is a darker burn than the regular wood and it did come out a little bit nicer than the regular wood did in my opinion. Now again, I think going too dark on this would be a bad idea. Um, I would probably start around the 20 to 25 or a little bit less right around there and kind of dial in my settings um, just to make sure it burns as good as it can. This wood here is actually a little bit different color than these two over here. And I've noticed that on different projects using baking soda, that it actually kind of gives a yellowish tint to your wood. So that's something to think about. Also, I believe you can use this on your food safe stuff. So if you want to do uh, cutting boards, that kind of thing, and you need that extra punch, you could use the baking soda solution. And I think you can get away with that um, by just kind of washing it when it's done and throwing some mineral oil on a cutting board or, or whatever. But overall, not a bad result. Last but not least, let's take a look at the clean section. It actually isn't too bad. It came out really good. I think I normally use uh, that 400 speed and 25 uh, power on my laser. Remember, I'm using the Light Object Ranger 3. So I think that in my case, I would stick with that 400 power 25 right in the center there. And honestly, it looks pretty good. Now, it's definitely not as contrasty as dark as the other two, but it would be okay if I was just doing a generic burn and it actually looks pretty clean. Overall, I think you should give it a try and see what works best for you. Both of these are great tools and I think they have their place in the laser community. I think both are great hacks and it really is gonna depend on what material you use and what it's gonna be used for. I actually use baking soda most of the time, but after this, I might start using borax more for stuff that doesn't have to be food safe. So give them both a try and let me know in the comments which one you like the best, because honestly, I think it's gonna come to personal preference, like I said before. If you wanna see another video about how you can make money with your laser, check this out.